and welcome to Bills. As always, we are live from London. I'm Simon Atkins, and let me tell you, we've got a treat for you tonight because we are joined by, on the sofa, by an iconic trio who first came on the scene with one of the biggest songs and catchiest songs of the 90s. They're back with a bang and a brand new album. Please give it up for Hanson. <laughs> Guys, we're so excited to have you um, on Build, and so are the audience by the looks of things. Thanks for now, we're going to be talking to you in just a second, but first, if you guys want to get involved, you absolutely can. You can drop us a tweet at Bill Series LDN, or you can leave a video or comment if you're watching below, if you're watching live on Facebook. Now, guys, you're very welcome to Build. <laughs> How are you guys feeling? Back in Good. London, back in the UK. Actually, like, I wish I had some Legos right now. You keep saying, are you ready to build? Happy to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the something? Lego when you need it? Yeah, it's like no, a com we were, competitive. What show. was it? About a year ago, we were here with, uh, we released an, an album last year uh, around Christmas. And so uh, it's good to be back. Yeah, it feels good. Um, and you guys are touring at the moment as well, which we talk about. But what are the fans like? in the UK. <laughs> Do I need to ask? Do I don't know what are you guys like. Lovely, incredible people <laughs> with amazing musical taste. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, it is interesting, you know, being a band for as long as we have and you, like, we've been a band for 27 years and you see the fans change, right? It's not just the same demographic of people every year. They're changing as you're changing and the music is evolving and the people are evolving and so now the dynamic of we still have sometimes 12-year-olds in the audience, but now it's like the fan that's been there since 12 bringing their 12-year-old. And that's kind of a, a crazy dynamic to have like multiple generations show up. Also, this the tour that we're doing, the project is called String Theory. It's a sure. symphonic project. So we're playing with different orchestras in different uh, cities. And um, it's interesting. That also brings out generations. Like you see two or like kids, parents, grandparents, people something about the quality of this show where it's sort of like step back and really listen, really sort of absorb the music. Well, let's yeah. talk about the new album, String Theory. So it is quite different from what you guys have done before, but uh, just tell us about it. Tell us about yeah. it, like where, and, and what, and you well, know. For why one, there's it. lots of violins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just wanted to make sure that that was clear. That's why the violin is on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, so, so when we were looking at what the next thing we wanted to do was, we were celebrating 25 years as a band and we said, what do we what do we want to do next? And and really at this point in a career, you start to think about I think more the legacy, more the the bucket list of things to do. And it's not just about trying to get another album out and trying to have a hit single or something like that. You're you're really trying to say what's the message we want to leave people with. And so as we started to talk about these bigger ideas, um, the idea of symphonies came up. I mean that's something I think we've all appreciated the idea of for years. Yeah. And then when we settled on this idea of telling a story, that really became just the impetus for what this r whole record became. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so uh, it's really, even though it's 22 songs, it's really one big song. Sure. It's that, probably the closest to thing show. to a Broadway, it's not really a Broadway show, but the sense of a musical where you really are, le if you're listening, you really are following the character. Yeah. And what is it like performing in front of an orchestra like that? I mean, it must feel... Amazing and very, very different for you guys. Yeah, I, it feels like very, very smile cool. in your yeah. face. You're yeah, I know. I mean, it's, it's, it's intimidating great. at first. Yeah, yeah, it, it is definitely intimidating. But I mean, I, I, but I think he, what, what you realize is, um, <laughs> I, I often compare um, symphony and kind of I would say kind of rock and roll or pop music is what you know what we do, and then the symphonic stuff is is a whole other ball of wax. It's a little bit like you're taking a Formula One racer and then you're going and you're driving NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, okay. it's just, it's it's both racing and then you're combining them together. And so there's Different a little bit of, of that, like you're figuring out where it all fits and then it, and then it all locks in. And it's really, really exciting when it all just kind of locks well, together. But was there it hours, said though hours of practice before oh, oh yeah. you actually get to record? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's definitely a lot of practice. And because we're used to playing by memory and they're playing by rote, you know, you really know that there's no... Um, <laughs> There's no audibles. There's no changing the show. There's no, if we miss a bar, we'll just jump back into the verse a bar later. Like, you really have to be on point with everything yeah. you do. We actually had, I remember one of the first shows we did, the violinist said, no, wait, you, you've memorized the entire show? 
And I thought to myself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, kind of been of doing it for a while. But the, the fact but then the other one is like, those, wait, so you're just reading the notes? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you're just like we reading grew, it? We grew up learning. We learned to play. We all learned to play piano first. And so yeah. we started start writing songs. So we learned you know, to read music. Um, but you stop needing to use it because a lot of times that's just the form is not needed in most cases where we're writing a song and rehearsing it. But it is an incredible thing. You know, we've now been able to play with, you know, some unbelievable musicians all over the world. And you walk in and you see that to talk about music as a universal language. Well, written music really is mm. universal language. And, you know, we're going to, you know, places all over the world. And you put that chart down. You say, nice to meet you playing with a symphony and you all play together. It's and incredible. is it, interesting it must be putting like a kind of a fresh spin on some of your old music because i mean it's a compilation of old and new music but yes. that must be is that does that feel awesome does it feel weird yeah no it's um it feels great yeah. I, I i know that the goal is always to write music that will be relevant decades later but that's not always true you know despite trying to do it and so when we were selecting songs for the show and you have this mix of brand new songs and um, deep cuts and, and you know songs people know, um, you really don't know until you start to do it whether there is a way to revisit that song and it still be relevant. And so it, it was a, a cool process, like uh, this time around is in this show, Umbop is in this show, uh, Where's the Love, Yearbook. Um, and, and so as you go to oh, these songs, you're trying to put them next to something new and try and write new melodies. And, yeah. um, it was... It was really gratifying because you, you really felt this sense of like, I'm enjoying, I'm still enjoying singing this song. I'm still enjoying kind of thinking about how to make this feel brand new. Well, we've got a track, um, a video from a track, Siren Call. So let's have a look at that, shall we? Siren Call, ladies and gentlemen. So how long did it actually take you to record this album? Well, I mean, it was over about a year and a half of working on building it. And then, I mean, the, the actual recording, obviously, is more of a... You Contained. have the, the session that gets together. Yeah. Um, the symphony that was recorded was in Prague. And um, they, you know, essentially you have this this long preparation. I mean, the process of conducting there was David Campbell, who we did, who did the arrangements. Mm -hmm. And he's sort of known for merging the classical and the right. sort of contemporary music, pop rock music world. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the heavy lifting is is the writing, you know, and reaching the point where you're, you're trying to communicate your vision for something. And so the songs, you know, the com technically we're the composers. These are all songs of ours. Um, but then we're, you know, suggesting working on arrangement parts for, okay, we want the strings to do this and the horns to do that. Yeah. And then David is going, okay, I'm trying to translate that, turn it into written music and, and then finish with something. So we essentially started by making, the hardest thing about it is usually when you do an album, you do an album and then you say, okay, great. Now we're going to take it on tour. What's yeah. the show going to be? In this case, from the beginning, you know, you're going to play this concert. The slash exact sequence, album. Slash album. <laughs> right, and exactly so you have to think way. about not just, you know, what's the music going to be, but okay, who's going to play on what song and can we transition? And Okay. So yeah. it was... Well, well yeah. and also the process of actually, you know, writing the album is just kind of what you're doing. You're We literally went through and second by second, bar by bar, laid out the entire first half and the entire second half, put in all of our kind of thoughts and ideas. Oh, this timpani swell should go into this song. This should be the violin, you know, break, and then it'll move into that. And, and we did a lot of that ahead of time, talked with David about it early on. Then wow. gave it, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very involved process, and, and it was really, really fun because what was so cool about it was... Here's us having deep thoughts. Oh, exactly. deep thoughts. We would, uh, was, just, was we would have the... We would serious. kind of submit ideas to David, and then <laughs> Zach jokingly said this the other day. I think it's so accurate. It's like, we said, David, this is the idea. And then he'd go, oh, you meant this idea. <laughs> and we're like, yes, that's yeah. exactly it's what we meant because it's but, I mean, better. It's definitely a bit different to just jamming in a studio, isn't it, when it, you've got like a is. whole orchestra behind you are there many arguments between you guys yes when you're <laughs> yeah. yeah or you mean Let's like, be earlier, well, no, like it's, it's funny i mean constantly we, we fight more probably now than ever right i mean i think people think of our band as sort of having a probably a pretty clean image we don't fight publicly but we fight all the time there's but, a reason why he's wearing a leather jacket right. and i'm wearing this yeah. vest <laughs> 
uh, it's still, it's because you're still bruised under the, yeah, the bruised. thing about it is we, we faint more than we ever have, but we're much better at it because we've done it so much. Yeah. So, you know. We have our own yeah, personal yeah, yeah. fight club. Baby. It's probably more, but it's more calculated fighting probably yeah. than it was back in the day. I'm much sure. more sly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, always only take shots to the ribs, not to the face, <laughs> yeah. because then it shows. Yeah, you know, th- I mean, and, and probably the hardest thing about this, the thing we fought the most about was probably just what songs to put in the show. Because sure. there's so many options. You know, there's hundreds of songs at this point that could have been in the show. And that's not including the songs that you have as an idea that you haven't shared with each other. Yet. Hey, I've got this song idea, you know. And so that that was a, a process, definitely. The, the other thing, too, is one of the things interesting about the show is you know, we're telling a story. But at this point in the career, we have, you know, we have our story. And then we also have the story that we've shared with a lot of people that yeah. follow the band. And that's definitely in the show. And so the whole thing about fighting or, you know, is... There's more at stake than just sort of, you know, oh, I'm mad at you today. I mean, you've built something over a long time. And so I think even when people come to the symphony show, I remember uh, one fan said, I'm really proud of you. And it was like, like my mom telling me, like, that's I'm that's, proud that's, of you. It's like, that's thank you. Sweet. You know, but, but I think, you know, and we've, so we've been an independent, we've been on our label since 2003. We've, you know, we've tried things, we've failed at it. And, and so much of this show is really almost sort of about the, the why behind kind of what yeah what we're about and sort of it it takes you through highs and lows and you know crashing and coming back from it and deciding to sort of keep going so i think there's something about the majesty of a symphony that even the simple thought everyone's sort of like oh this is I'm, this is supposed to be more interesting or sophisticated <laughs> and it's it brings important. you it brings you in it brings you <laughs> into mature. the story yeah it is mature it's mature yeah <laughs> so, um okay let's take it back to the beginning for a moment because yeah. your debut album middle of nowhere spawned a string of 40 top singles multi grammy nominations and record sales of exceeding 16 million i mean that deserves a round of applause i still have that guitar yeah. Love that what guitar. What was it like back then for you guys, going from being virtually unknown to one of the biggest bands in the world? I don't know why. I, I feel weird saying this. I don't think it's actually all that different. <laughs> than now? or than now. Really? In a, weird, in a weird way, because even though... Yeah, You're eating I mean, there carbs, were more people right? There were more people screaming really, really loud in your ears at really high, high pitches. Although these <laughs> days, there's still quite a lot of screaming at really high pitches. Mostly Zach behind the drums. Hitting yeah! The yeah! <laughs> exactly. But but it's I don't know. I mean, I don't feel all that different than I did then. And I think I mean honestly, I think I think in a weird way, I think the hardest thing about being young and and starting off that the way that it all did is I think we kind of perpetually felt like the the music we were making was the sub subtext and the fame was the for, at the forefront. Right. And we were always trying to flip that. Right, like, right, right. No, 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 no. No, no, we're we, I mean, we're glad everybody's here, but like, uh, have you heard the song I wrote? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it was like, it's like, so it's a challenge. It's an extraordinary thing. I mean, to, to be able to do this as a job, there's so many talented musicians that don't get to be successful. And then to be young and have success and something to build off of when you're, I mean, I was 11, 12. Wow. Uh, I mean, that's so, insane. you know, you, it's, it's, it's a powerful thing. And I think the main thing for us is always looking at it that way. I think that the tendency is to think, oh, what did you miss out on? Or, or how hard was it? But really, success is not the hard part. It's, it's sort of keeping yourself mm. at a level where you're still fighting for it. You're, you still remember how you got there. That's the hard thing because it's so easy to just be like, I'm really great. Everybody loves me. Done. Um, and then, of course, that the worldwide fame day. of Umbop came in 97. Did you guys have any idea how huge a hit that was going to be? Was uh, how huge it was going to be? No. Yeah, I mean, I mean I, nobody could know that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you know what um, you know what you're proud of, and you know what you would want to sing, you know, on a stage in front of people, and then you throw that out there and hope people like it. Yeah. But no, of course not. Couldn't I possibly. Would, I would actually say contextually, I think in a way, when uh, when that first record happened, and when Umbop specifically was released as a single, I think in some way. You realize that it's it's very very successful, but to some extent, you don't realize how truly unique and rare that mm. is. And, and it's not that you take it for granted; it's just that more that hindsight provides you with a level of understanding of how unique uh, that opportunity really is, and how unique your life is. And and you and you do your best to 
you know, not squander it, shall yeah. we say. And of course, he records this for the new album with the uh -huh. Symphony Orchestra. I think we've a clip of that that we're going to show yeah. now. Right. Umbop, ladies and gentlemen. I have to say, the chorus of that and the lyrics still confuse me. I literally cannot get it right. Um, it's you a, you're it? not the only one. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, five-year-olds can do it, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I was just, I was just about laughing about five -year -olds uh, my, my five year old's like, Dad, I like that Umbop song. Do, like, do people dude. still come up to you and, like, when they see you, just go, Umbop? Mm they actually uh, do that yeah. exactly. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they <laughs> do. Yes, <laughs> they just did, actually. Someone just <laughs> did. Um, it's weird. We were on this know, TV, like, <laughs> internet talk show. And, <laughs> and <it's laughs> The, um, it's, Sorry, it's a good guys, thing. It's a it. good thing. I mean, we. It's good to be able to do something that you're proud of. Like to be successful is something that you still feel like has a, a message worth singing. Like Umbop is all about the passage of time. It's about the fact that few things will last. It's about sort of like grabbing on to those things and recognizing them. And and so we can still sing that song because it it has a meaning that still connects with who we are. Like, and that's why it's in the show. I mean, the the, the string theory show. We said it was a story, but it's. Umbop is in there because it has the message it plants, you know, is this idea that this character is going to sort of reach for this, you know, possibility in their future. And well, they're, they're already leave recognizing, things behind. yeah, that things are, you know, if you look around at people and they don't get it and they don't yeah. get it and they don't get it, but there's a few that will. And so, you know, it found its home in this show because of that sort of narrative. And so, like, you see the performance there. We, You know, the song was written more like a campfire song, more mm. like almost a, everybody sit around. And, and so that's how it's done in this show. And it does, it brings it brings sort of back to how it began and brings it back to the heart It also of the brings out some cool qualities. I mean, this is true of a lot of the songs in the show. It, it, it brings out qualities of this song uh, that you maybe otherwise wouldn't be able to highlight quite in the same way. You know, you, because you're able to do things with the mel melodic chord structure and so on by having cellos and violins and horns and so on that, that bring out certain melancholy or certain joy uh, in a way that you can only do in like a score for right. a movie or yeah. something like that. And here you are being able to be a band and have the and have the power of a of a film score right behind you. It's it's pretty fun to be able to do that. And and obviously whether it's new songs or old songs, it, it's it's mostly about serving the show and serving the the music itself. And luckily, you know, songs like Umbop fit perfectly with that. Well, let's talk about the tour because you guys have a date in London this Friday, but it's yeah. sold out. Sold out. Is there any plans for another London date? Mm. Uh, we were asked about that, but um, we don't know. <laughs> 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 because they're already... Let's playing. be honest. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, but, you know, I mean, this show, part of the great thing about this show is that once it's been created, I mean, we're able to, we have symphonies asking us to come uh, to cities that haven't been on this tour. And so it's almost like we created this, this great gem of a, a project where we can be doing something else and say, you know what, we're going to do five string theory shows, you know, this fall or, and so it's, it's an amazing thing to know you can go somewhere and simply put music down and say, let's do this show right now. Of course we have to be rehearsed to play it. Yes. Well, now yeah. we mostly know it. No, we <laughs> exactly memorized it though. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but <laughs> we're actually headed to Australia right after this and getting to play some of our, you know, really amazing venues as well. So where have you guys, where have you been so far and where have you got left to do? In the UK. We did US, Canada, UK, we have uh, just Manchester, Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah, Manchester and Birmingham, we did do London. We do Nottingham oh, tomorrow. Glasgow and yeah. then we're in Glasgow. Yeah, the you just point to the yeah. so just, 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 just <laughs> point, point and read. Point and it's read. all under the Tower Bridge Act. <laughs> but top. so, you know, you guys have had fans for like over two decades. Where, you know, they're obviously so loyal, but where are the craziest fans? <sighs> Brazil. <ones. laughs> <Yeah>. Really? <laughs> Really? Like somebody from you see, the there's some Brazilians like, here yeah. right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we, they we, know. We you mean they're not they're crazy in the UK? Yeah. There's something about Brazil. I don't know what it is, but Brazilians are really proud to be from Brazil. <laughs> And they share it constantly. I don't know. Americans probably do this, but they're like, hello, I'm from Brazil. And you're like, what's your name? Um, you know, something like that. And then they do something else. Most people, when you, when you meet someone, you kind of, um, you know, change your posture to fit their tradition, right? Oh, in Japan, you're from, you yeah, bow. Yeah, yeah. Brazil, yeah. you bow. In the UK, you would shake a hand. In Brazil, they do the opposite. They're like, hello, I'm from Brazil. No, no, we kiss. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're like, oh, really? Well, <laughs> you kissed twice and yeah. you hugged. Yeah. It's strange. Yeah. In Oklahoma, we usually just slap each other on the butt and then ride horses. <laughs> um, Please don't pick up that custom, anyone. <laughs> Oh uh, my God! Okay, we got need to talk family before we finish up. So okay. you guys all have kids. Yes. yes. There's thirteen. Yes. Kids between. Uh, I stopped three counting of you. at three. Yeah. That's how many. Uh, I, I, he has what three. is it like when you all get together? It must be bananas. Uh, it's very loud. It's very loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can only imagine. There's a lot of slapping and riding horses. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's you know I mean the, the good to see you. <laughs> one good thing about it is they um, they do have almost a sibling like relationship. A lot of our the cousins because they have this strange thing that their dads do something together, work together, have this sort of life that's not really especially common, and so they're kind of connected in that strangeness. Um, and but they all you know are, are close and yeah. very loud together. Yeah, um, well, any you can't imagine how that's possible. I'm sure. Do you think any of them will follow in your footsteps? And do you want them to? Do I want them to? <laughs> Probably not. No, but uh, no. I mean, uh, only in the sense of as a parent, you know the pitfalls and challenges of the job that you've got, and you just hope that if they choose to do it, that they have the kind of endurance and wherewithal to kind of kind of stick with it. But um. I don't know. I mean, I think it's very possible that some of the I mean, kids will end up in some form or another in the arts in a broad sense. It would be I'd hard to imagine nobody, you know, making art in some way as yeah. much as they're around. Yeah. I mean, we have, I mean, m my kids are definitely into music, into, you know, writing songs, playing, singing. Yeah. But the thing that you want is you want for people to get a chance to do something that they're passionate about. So if it is music, if it is arts, whatever it is, and we were given that, you know, we were given that gift of being told you actually can try you know and we're not going to completely tell you you're insane by our parents so see, you sort see, of want to do I, that i'm clearly the meanest dad i <laughs> i cannot see, imagine see this you being a mean dad i'm like sorry if they're good <laughs> <laughs> right well, i, I, I mean, feel the same way if they're like really bad i'm going hey dude no <laughs> you're not it just don't. Actually, he's like, hey, dude, no, no, no. You realize that your last name is the same as my last name? And my band names would be. If you're, you're not if taking you're me not down good, with you. You're not taking. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. You're having to change your last name if well, you're going to be in a band. That, that's sorry. That, it, sounds, it sounds funny, but I, I, I honestly think that's true. It's more important that, like, if you bring something really good to, to the world with yeah. through your art, then that's great. If you just want to do it and you're terrible, then no. <laughs> you know, like. But that, listen, we all can't that's wait actually, to figure I, out. I don't think enough people think that. They're like, we should go to half that's, the celebrities and reality Zach, TV there stars was an and just be like. The assumption that goodness is required. It was? Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, listen, okay. we can't I'm wait to, to see what the handsome kids get up to sadly that's all we've got time for we've oh. absolutely loved having you guys on build and good luck with the uh, the london gig thank you hansen's brand new album string theory is out now so make sure you give a listen you'll not be disappointed we'll be back at 6 30 with emma appleton and luke treadaway talking about brand new series traitor so don't go anywhere right now though give it up one more time for hansen yeah.